Hi everybody, my name's Chris here. So today we are going to make ourselves a bra using the Cloth Habit Pattern by Amy Chapman. Um, I've used this pattern for quite some time now. I use it in my teaching classes, but I thought it would be nice to um, do some demonstration. To run a demonstration to accompany the classes that I currently offer around Cornwall. You can get the pattern through Amy's website um, and I'll leave a link to the description for the for the pattern below. I, we're going to make view C of the pattern. The one reason that I like this particular bra, it's an underwired bra, but I like that because it's got really good hold. It's a nice firm fit and also it's got the um, adjustable straps at the front instead of at the back, which was one of the main reasons that I liked it um, and it gives you really good support. So. Let's get into it. So let's have a look at our pattern pieces. The bra is made up of six different pieces. The upper cup, which is piece A. B is the inner cup. C is the outer cup. D is the bridge. E is the cradle. And F is the band. On the pattern pieces, it tells you exactly how many to cut of each. When you're making your bra, you will need to follow the instructions on the pattern pieces so you know exactly how, how many to cut. So we're going to start off by cutting out our fabrics and the first thing we're going to do is fold back piece A, the top seam line, so that we can utilise the scalloped edge on our um, lace. And then lay out your pattern pieces for the bra, for the bra cups to start with. And that will be the first thing that you will cut out. Make sure that the grain lines are always following the horizontal direction so that you're getting the best of the stretch. Um, and just lay your pieces out. I use a rotary cutter and I also use pattern weights to get the best of my fabrics. So let's get to the construction. Woo! So the first thing we're going to do is separate all our pieces and we're going to treat them all individually now. If you can get piece B and piece C from me, which is the inner and the outer, and lay them next to each other so that the notches are matching, and then pop the inner bra cut piece, lay it on top. So you've basically got it facing away from each other, as you can see in the photograph. And we're going to put the inner, the inner bra cut piece lining underneath everything so we're kind of making like a how should we say it an outer bra cup sandwich that's what we're making here and there's a reason that we're doing this and what we're going to do is we're going to use a technique called stitch and flip and that's the technique that we're working towards with this form of construction and what happens is that the raw edge is hidden within the cups and that's why we're using this particular method now we've got the pieces together i would suggest clipping everything together or you could hand sew it the clips that you can see here will just keep all four of the um, pattern pieces together for you to be able to sew them and then place your work under the sewing machine as you can see i'm doing here I'm just sort of manoeuvring everything into place now just to make sure I've got everything lined up really neatly. And I'm going to lift my presser foot and I'm going to start sewing my first seam. And all of um, Amy's seams are 0.5 centimetres, so they're half a centimetre each. And there's no need to backstitch here, although you can do, I, I did, but on some of my sewing machines, it, um, backstitching doesn't go well on this one it's fine so sew your first seam make sure that you are using your right hand to pull your fabric through so that you're supporting your fabric as it goes through don't forget that this is we're dealing with really slippery fabrics here and finish sewing your first seam and before you pull your work out if you can get the other um bra cut piece and place that one underneath as well. Just clip it together or use um, the pins that we're using 
Oh, you'll see later on, I also hand sew my work as well. But yeah, try and put them both under at the same time because that way you make sure that both seams are exactly the same width. And don't forget to use your opposite hand to support your work um, as it's going through. Um, and yeah, so your first seam. Um, stitch length that I'm using is 3.5. And like I said before, you don't need to backstitch, although you can if you want to, but you don't really need to because all the seams are going to cross as they're going along. So this is a view of our first finished seam. And you can see now that the bracket lining and the top fabric, the lace, is starting to come apart which is why it's really important to hand sew the pieces together. So from this point, I'll definitely start hand sewing everything. And it just means that I'm that once I've hand stitched it, I can then treat all, both of the layers as one piece of fabric. And it does mean that they stabilize them and that the finish will be much neater in the end. So take your time, hand sew it. You don't need to um, back stitch. You will just knot your thread at one side and leave a long tail. Now we're going to put on the upper cut piece. So with the upper cut piece, you can see here I'm clearly laying it out so that you can see the direction of how everything's to match and it goes over the top, right sides to right sides. And what I will do is I will pin one end, match up my balance points, pin the other end, which I'm showing you here. I'm sorry you can't see this as clearly. I need to get a, a new camera. But match up your balance points and pin it into place. And then what we will do is what's called easing the pieces in. So evenly distribute the fabric and you will need to put lots of pins in. So try and make sure that you evenly distribute and take your time to make sure you're getting all of the layers. So you can see here, I am distributing the fabric. And what I do is I pin everything and I check it that everything's all evenly distributed. Because bear in mind that the fabrics have got a nice stretch so you can evenly distribute the fabric. And if it need be, I might take some of the pins out and I might repin to make sure that it's, like I say, evenly distributed. And once it's all securely pinned in place, um, get your needle and thread again, as you can see I'm doing here. Or if you prefer, you've got it well pinned into place. If you've put loads of pins in, that's fine. Or if you're going to use clips, that's fine. But for me, I like to, um, at this point, I like to start hand sewing. And I prefer, I'm just doing a straight, a straight um, stitch just to hold all the layers in place because I find that's more secure for me. Um, when I'm sewing okay so where we've just hand sewed it's time to uh, machine stitch that edge as well and then when you open out your bra cup you will see it looks just like this one and here's some images of a the second one that I have so generally with me I tend to uh, cut out like three or four different bras it also means that I've got plenty of um, extra fabrics to experiment with you know, if I want to try bra cup lining or cut and sew foam, for example. So we're going to work on the bridge now. You're going to have a bridge piece in the lace and in the lining. And what you're going to do is put those together right sides to right sides. And you are going to sew across the top of the bridge. You can see I'm just pinning the area at the moment to hold the two pieces together. And it is a little bit difficult to sew this because the pieces are really small. So think about using a, a piece of fabric and sewing that through and using that as a lever to pull your bridge piece through. As you can see, I'm doing here um, because I know the pieces are really small and it stops it from getting chewed up in your machine as well. So get hold of your bridge piece and then place the lining pieces down first and the lace pieces on top and then put the lace on top of the lace bridge. So we're going to have lace, lace with lining, lining underneath. So we're making a bridge sandwich. Very much the same as we did before with the stitch and flip. We're going to do it in this instance again. And the nice thing is that the um, 
seam will be hidden within the within the stitch so i'm just showing you here what it looks like underneath so you can see that i've got the lace on top and it's actually um duoplex lining that i've got underneath um, so the duoplex will will be nice and soft against the skin. And I'm just doing the same on the other side here. I've got lace, lace to lining, lining. Um, and I'm going to pin these and then I will um, hand stitch them as well. So to finish off this outer cradle piece, we're going to need to add our back bra band. And then that's the final piece of the um, cradle so those pieces need to be added and we're going to sew this the exact same way that we have done with everything else so that the seam is hidden within the within the bra and then what we will do is add a top stitch just to keep it all looking nice and neat so once you've got those pieces added to the outer cradle um that's the basic construction really for the outer cradle our next job will be to start putting the bra cups in and what I would do before you put your bra cups in so when we start to put the cups in we'll start from the front end um, line up your two pieces your bra cup and the inside of the bridge pin both sides so pin the the front pin the outer and then ease the cup in and that's how you will get it in perfectly and we need to think about what we're doing here to make sure that before we put our final stitch in, we've checked to make sure that it's fully lined up and it looks evenly distributed. So I always pin loads and then I will hand stitch and then I will check my work before completing my next seam. This way, if you check in each time you're, before you start sewing your seam, you know that everything's in the right place. Put the, put the bra up against you so that you know that the cups are in the right place. You know that the seams are facing in the right direction and you're happy because it, it is really hard work if you need to unpick this. So check twice, cut once. And we can see here I've got the first cup in and I've got it all nicely pinned. I'm going to hand stitch it next. I'm just repositioning pins. But I'm all constantly turning it round to the front, checking that it's symmetrical, checking it's in the right location, checking that my seams are all lined up and that it looks really neat and tidy before putting the next one in. Well, we are a third of the way in and let me tell you now, I'm dining out after all this hard work. We, as you can see, the cups are in. So we've got the basic construction there and I think we need a round of applause because we've got this far, you know, from here... We're like halfway there. We need to stop and have a glass of wine to celebrate our accomplishment because, heck, this looks like a beautiful bra. And I'm just showing off here because at the end of the day, I had two on the go both at the same time. Right, on to the most important bit, which is the channeling. So the channeling, we the purpose of the channeling is to hold the underwire for the bra so it gives extra support and that's why we've got it. So on one side of the channeling is a textured edge and on the other side is like a fluffy edge and we want the fluffy edge to sit towards the skin so that it's nice and soft. And what we're gonna do is our previous seam that we have stitched, we are going to use that and butt the channeling up to it. And that's the, gonna be the next um, seam that we will sew and what we will do is start from the inside uh, sorry start from the bus cup on the inside and we will work our way slowly and cautiously all the way to about five or ten five centimeters towards the underarm and we'll there's a reason that we're stopping there and all will be revealed in a more and again put your work under so when we're sewing the channeling we are sewing towards the edge, towards the outer edge, because the idea is that we need to leave a hole within the middle so that the underwire, the metal underwire can fit inside that channeling. Um, so take your time and sew really slowly. So you're sewing from the inside of the bra 
But when it eventually gets finished, we will turn it round and finish it off from the outside of the bra so that our last seam, which is the most visual seam, looks perfectly neat. And here's a little tip for you. If you move your needle to the left, you'll be able to get your stitch really close. And what I do is I position my needle, turn the flywheel, position my needle exactly where I want it to go so that I know that it's going to hit exactly where it needs to be. And I sew really slowly so that I've got maximum control. And like I say, start from the inside of the, of the bus cup and work your way towards the underarm but stop about five centimeters before the end and if you can back stitch for me that would be great and again we go nice and slowly because when we go slowly when we're sewing it means we've got good control and you will use both hands to feed the fabric through and once you've got enough so this shows you what it, what it now looks like and you can see clearly there I've left a good five centimetres plus excess um, of channeling to finish later on and I'm just going to fold it back so that it doesn't get in the way because our next job is going to be to work on the underarm and we are flying through this, it's unbelievable. Well, at this point, I then had to change machines. Um, my other machine doesn't always like sewing elastics. So, before we work on the underarm, I just thought it would be nice to start popping with that, popping our elastics in. So, we're going to pop the elastic in for, that's on the bottom of the bra that gives us our, our bra band elastic. That's what we're going to put on next. And the bra band elastic... When you measure below the bust on the chest, that measurement there is the distance for your bra band elastic. So we're going to feed the elastic through using a zigzag stitch. My zigzag stitch is usually a five, four or a five, depending. But I would always advise you to run a test stitch. Um, and we're not, there's no, we're not exercising in tension. We're just going to let it feed through. And the elastic is being fed through and the zigzag is going to be on the bottom edge of the elastic. So put the elastic on top of the front of the bra. And then position it under your foot and start to zigzag along the bottom edge of the elastic. So we're going to zigzag along the bottom edge of the elastic. And then when we turn it under, we're going to perform a three step zigzag. And here's what it looks like when it's finished. Really nice and neat. So we're still working on the elastic for the brow band. And what we're going to do is, as you can see in the photo, turn it under. And if it's got a scalloped edge, utilise the scalloped edge to make it look really pretty. And what I would do here is, I've just turned it under. I'm just lining it up to the edge of the elastic. And I'm going to add a pin in to secure it. And what I will do is I'll add a few pins all the way along. Um, just to keep it in place. But once I've turned it under. This is where I'm going to perform a three step zigzag. Which you would see on most um, ready made shop, shop bought bras today. And I will position it all the way along with my pins. Checking it. Just doing it a little bit at a time. Thanks, motorbike. Okay, it's gone now. So, I'll position it a little by little. Um, just checking it to make sure that the elastic is even. Doing a visual check to make sure it's nice and neat. That the bra is um, flat. That I've got all the pieces underneath. Because you kind of need to... Because you're dealing with um, two pieces. You've got to... Hold your hand underneath the bra to make sure that both pieces are lined up and in place. And then once you know that, um, then pin it. So it is a little bit of checking, positioning, unpinning, repinning. Before finally sewing. And do this all the way to the end. And then, like I said earlier, we are going to um, run a three-step zigzag. So three-step zigzag... 
is a lovely little stitch because like the regular zigzag it still allows for the stretch within the natural fabrics the three step is three small straight stitches one way three small straight stitches another way but it still allows for the fabric to naturally stretch and it looks really pretty as well so it can be used as like a decorative stitch it's a really nice stitch to complete your work with And here's one of the blue bras that I've been working on. Hopefully you're able to see the zigzag stitch. But if you've got any problems or any comments or any questions, don't forget you can always send me an email or you can drop me um, a question in the comments and I will happily answer the question. I'll also quite happily make a little YouTube video to assist and here's my the settings for my machine for the three step i just wanted you to all see um settings that i'm using this time and um i'm now positioning my work under and i'm doing the three step zigzag oh that bike again i'm now doing a three step zigzag on the front removing my pins as i'm going along just along the edge so that it looks really nice and neat because visually we want to be proud of what we've made because we've worked so hard to get this far. So do your three step, take your time, um, don't rush and just go little by little and you'll be really happy with what you've done. So we're going to work on our underarm elastic now and what we're going to do is if you lay the elastic flat with the scalloped edge towards the bra cup you will zigzag sew up to the bra band with a normal stitch at three and a half and, and feed the fabric through. And then when you get to the lace, because that area is under the actual arm hole, you will need to, to um, pull it taut to about a third of the way. And, if, and what that does is that creates a, it creates a gather. And you'll be able to see the photo here in this next clip of the blue bra. And what that does is it creates a gather under the um, armhole to allow the, the bra to fit you better. So that's the aim of the game. So you can see I've got um, the bra underneath with the sewing machine. Um, under the presser foot, make sure you've got a zigzag stitch. And take your time and just let the work feed through as normal because we don't want any tension on this area. We just want to feed the work through. It'd be a nice wide zigzag up to where the lace is. And when you get to the lace, you will stop. So to make sure that I am um, pulling them both taut at the same time, I'll cut both pieces of elastic the same width and I'll perform the same action twice. So I'll go straight up whilst I'm sewing up to the bra band. And then when I get to the lace, I'll pull it taut. And um, you can see here I'm supporting my work and um, pulling it through. Now I've got an electric sewing machine. Um, it's button operated so it's a little bit of multitasking all at the same time for me but I managed to get it through and then when I've done that I'll do the other side and the exact same way um, like I say sew the bra band normal, normal zigzag and then pull it taut from the lace and make sure that when you f that you pull it taut the same amount so you're finishing in the same time so you could pin it if that helps you to be able to um, get the right tension on both sides. And then do the other side. And just a little pro tip for you. When I zigzag, I actually zigzag off onto the actual elastic past my work. And that way I know that I've completed the stitch. And same thing as we've done before. You fold the elastic over, but this time... Make sure that you are showing a little bit of the scalloped edge because I think it looks really pretty. And then you'll go back through and this time you're going to do a three step, always on the edge, um, closest to the scallop. 
and you'll do your little three step and you're still pulling it taut um, so that you can encourage the stretch within the fabrics. So you're still pulling the lace taut, I should say. And you'll go right to the end and then you'll do the other side as normal. And you'll find that the, what's interesting, you'll find that the underarm will have that natural stretch and shaping around the um, underarm and the natural breast cup. So here's a picture of the finished underarm and it's looking mighty fine and we're not far off now. A little bit of um, tidying up to do, the straps to add, hook and eye, tidying up and we are done. Okay, our focus now is going to be to do some tidying up and to put the channeling, finish the channeling as well. So tidy up your loose fabrics. If you've got any um, overhanging fabric, if you can cut that off for me, just to tidy that up. And also what I need you to do is to lay the channeling under the bra cup down and just make sure that it all fits down nice and neatly because we've got quite a lot of bulky seams here. And as you can see, I'm using a, a, a small pair of scissors just to remove some of the bulk. You may find that when the seams are really bulky, it's going to be hard to stitch. So what I need you to do is under the area where the seams cross, under the bra cup, where the seams all cross and the elastics, you might need to just cut a little bit of the elastic down just so that um, everything will sew together. So you can see here, like I say, I'm just tidying up some of the loose fabrics so that when I sew the channeling down, it all um, sews down nice and neatly and there isn't any overhanging hanging threads. And, and you... you and you do want the inside of the bra to look as beautiful as the outside of the bra. That's really important because you've spent so much time and effort to get to this point. So I can see here that my channeling will not fold down on top of the um, bra band elastic. And what I'm going to need to do is just cut a little curve around that to release, to allow for some of the release. And I did that off camera. I should have shown you that on camera. But I was then able to pin it afterwards. So what I do is I pin all my channeling down to make sure that it all fits. But then when we finish sewing it, we're going to sew it from the right side. So that that line of stitching looks perfectly neat when it's visually um, viewed through the eye. So I'm just going around now, around the channeling. And I'm pinning every so often, but I'm checking all the fabrics are straight. Everything's lying straight so that I know when everything's stitched together, it's going to lie perfectly. And take your time. You will probably need to use your um, regular silver pins because the any other any fine pins are, are, won't go through all the, the bulk. So pin through, pin all the way around, and then we're going to sew it from the right side. And here's a view on the right side of the um, bra. And this is the view that we're going to sew it. We're just going to take our time and we're going to sew just inside the stitch where the channeling is. I'm sure you probably noticed by now that there's some common features in bra sewing with the stitches. Uh, straight stitch, curved sewing, curved seams, zigzag, three step. And when you're sewing like this, you're sewing from the right side and you can't see... You have to sort of feel your way around um, and you need to make sure that the seams are not bulky and that you really take your time and check and remove your pins as you're going along. So I sew this bit quite slowly because I want it to look really neat from the front but also I want to make sure that I get all the channeling in and I also need to um, make sure that I'm not sewing too close so that the channeling doesn't fit in and I'm not sewing too wide away so that I don't miss the channeling as well. So I sort of use my index finger um, to feel my way around as I'm sewing around this little curve. And I just stop at short intervals so that I can check from the underside. 
and check from the front to make sure that it's still nice and neat. I check from the underside to make sure that I've got all the fabrics in, that the fact everything's all positioned correctly. I'm removing my pins and I've got control of everything. So you'll probably notice now we've got quite a lot of loose ends. And I'd like to introduce a new stitch to your repertoire. And that is the bar tack stitch. And the purpose of the bar tack stitch is it protects areas of loose of tension. Um, and if you look at your jeans, you will always see there's a bar tack stitch. So to perform a bar tack stitch, you will have your machine set at stitch width of number one. And what you will do is you will go zigzag forwards and backwards to a distance of about one centimetre. A bar tack stitch is really narrow. And what we will do is we will use that bar tack stitch as a finishing off point when the bra is done. And it will mean that the areas of stress, which are probably going to be the shoulders, underarms, those seams there, we will add a final bar tack stitch. So at the moment you can see it, I'm just removing all my loose threads, uh, removing loose channeling. At this point, put your underwires in. So we are almost at the end. We're going to start looking at our straps now, which really makes it feel like we're coming to the end of the bra. So if you can get your straps out, if you can get your rings and sliders out, and if you can get the hook and eye finisher for me, and we will start working on that next. So just a quick side note, there's a couple of different types of straps. You could go for um, a strap with a scalloped edge, or you could use your bra band elastic, and you can also use that as a strap. And the difference is that the bra band elastic, because it's got more resistance, you will find that gives you more support. So if you were bigger busted, I would probably say you'll want to use that one. And if you were smaller busted, you will probably want to use the original um, strap elastic, which you can see here. But it's entirely up to you. It's just about how you feel. I find because I've got a bigger cup size, I'll use the bra band elastic and it, it gives me a lot more support on the cup where the other elastic to me isn't as supportive, but being a bigger cup size, we need extra support for obvious reasons. So you need a piece about 150 centimeters um, in total, for example. Um, fold it in half and then I would cut it, cut that um, in half. So you've got two pieces, probably about 75 centimeters each. And we're gonna start making the straps from there. So you'll notice with all elastics, as I've said before, there is one side that's a plush side or a furry side, which is the side we want closest to the skin. And there is an opposite side, which is generally a satiny, um, it might be textured, but you'll be able to tell the difference. And that's the side that we want showing on the bra. So if you can get a slider for me, Feed one side of the elastic through the slider, as you can see I'm doing here. Feed it through both ways, just like this. You can see the opposite side is the plush side and the front that we're looking at is the shiny side. And what we're going to do is we're gonna put that under the sewing machine, pin it first, please. And then we're gonna put that under the sewing machine and we're just gonna do a little zigzag, that bar tack zigzag bar tack or zigzagging a narrow zigzag stitch forwards and backwards to hold that seam in place and this is what it looks like when it's finished you can see a little zigzag stitch there nice and neat obviously if you do it in coordinating um color to the straps the stitch won't be visible but i've done it in a dark so that you can see exactly what we're going what we're trying to achieve next job is to feed one of the rings through and then feed the end back through the slider. And out the other side. 
The ring will attach to the front of the bra cup. The end of the slider will attach to the underarm and this will finish the bra and it's how it's all held together. Really clever how she's designed this. I just think it's brilliant. So we can see here the straps already. I've positioned it so it's ready for me to put onto the bra. And if you get one of your current um, supermarket bras, you'll be able to look at that to compare and you'll be able to see that this is how a strap elastic is meant to look. So it's time to attach it to the bra. And what we need to do is have the bra facing upwards in front of us. Um, and what you will do is place the slider, just pull it as you can see here and pin it into place. Fold it back and pin it into place. Simple as that. And how that will be held is it will be held with a straight stitch. That will be held with a straight stitch and then you will do a zigzag or a bar tack as we discussed earlier to um, secure it and hold it into place because that's another area of tension. So do the same on the other side and then we'll be ready to start sewing. So I've got both sides now of my straps um, stitched in together and it's time to attach the strap to the, to the underarm thus finishing that particular piece of the bra. So you lay the strap down and then what you will do is turn the strap over once clockwise, twice clockwise. I'll just do it again for you. Lay it down. Turn it over once clockwise, twice clockwise so that the underside of the strap is showing and pin it into place and we'll use the same stitch that we've been using throughout it's going to be a zigzag stitch and then you're going to fold it over as before and you're going to finish it off with a three-step zigzag and finally you will bar tack the the area of stress which you can see my index finger is there just under the arm, that's going to be an area of stress. And we'll use that as our finishing off tidying up stitch. So just here is our area of stress. And you can see it's quite an area of stress. It's a bulky area as well. So as I said, you've done your zigzag, then you'll do your three step. And finally, the hook and eye um, closure will go on. And you are done. So here's some photographs of some of the classes that I've been teaching in lately. And here's a, a view of a couple of bras that I've made. So I just wanted to say bye. I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial. Love the feedback. See you soon. Bye. If you've got any feedback for the tutorial, be it good, be it bad, be it any positive recommendations, please feel free to share them with me. I'm This is a learning process for me. And the main thing for me is that as a pattern cutter, I just want to be able to share my knowledge and my sewing experience with you. With the filming, I'm still learning myself, so I'm open to... Um, offerances of opinions on how I can improve and I think it'll be great learning for me as this is great learning for you it's a two-way period and teamwork makes the dream work 
So finally, I wanted to share some photographs of a couple of bras that I've made quite recently. Like I say, I make three and four at a time when I'm sewing them all together. And I just wanted to show you a couple of um, ladies who have made these, these tutorials possible for me because these are the guys in the classes who started this journey for me uh, as a as a now um, sewing YouTuber. And it's thanks to them, I owe them everything, as well as the vendors as well who allow me to run the classes. So I'll say bye for now, and I'll see you soon for the next tutorial. I'm going to run this class again, uh, say class, I'm going to run this tutorial again, but I've got it in step-by-steps. So I've got this one where you can see it as a full uh, extended version. But if you prefer, you can also watch the step-by-steps. Um, uh, and those are short cut down versions, just bite-sized pieces to make it easier. But all the links are in the description. So take care and see you soon. Bye.